In the ancient Mediterranean world, the classical compass winds were names for the points of geographic direction and orientation, in association with the winds as conceived of by the ancient Greeks and Romans. Ancient wind roses typically had 12 winds and thus 12 points of orientation, sometimes reduced to 8 or increased to 24. Originally conceived as a branch of meteorology, the classical wind rose had only a tentative relationship with actual navigation. The classical 12-point wind rose was eventually displaced by the modern compass rose 8-point, 16-point and 32-point, adopted by seafarers during the Middle Ages. Topic. Origins. It is uncertain when or why the human sense of geographic orientation and direction became associated with winds. It is probable that for ancient settled populations, local physical landmarks e.g. mountains, deserts, settlements were the initial and most immediate markers of general direction. Towards the coast. Towards the hills. Towards the lands of Xanadu. Etc. Astral phenomena, in particular the position of the sun at dawn and dusk, were also used to denote direction. The association of geographic direction with wind was another source. It was probably farming populations, attentive to rain and temperature for their crops, that noticed the qualitative differences in winds. Some were humid, others dry, some hot, others cold, and that these qualities depended on where the wind was blowing from. Local directional names were used to refer to the winds, eventually giving the wind itself a proper name, irrespective of the observer's position. This was likely furthered by sailors who, far from landmarks at sea, nonetheless recognized a particular wind by its qualities and referred to it by a familiar name. The final step, completing the circle, was to use the proper names of the winds to denote general cardinal directions of the compass rose. This would take a little longer to work itself through. Topic. Biblical In the Hebrew Bible, there is frequent reference to four cardinal directions. The names of the directions seem to be associated with physical landmarks for the ancient Israelites living in the region of Judea, e.g. East is referred to as Kedem, which may derive from Edom, red, and may be a reference to the color of the rising dawn, or the red sandstone cliffs of the land of Edom to the east. North is referred to as Safan, from Mount Safan on the northern edge of Syria, south is often Negev, from the Negev desert to the south, and west is Yam, sea, meaning the Mediterranean Sea. Orientation seems to be to the east, in the direction of the rising sun, with the result that the terms Kedem, Safan and Negev became generalized with facing, left, and right side of anything. The association of cardinal directions with winds is implied at several places in the Old Testament. Four winds are referred to in the Bible in several places. Kedem East is used frequently as the name of a scorching wind that blows from the east. It is related to the modern word Kudem, Kadima, meaning forward. There are several passages referring to the scattering of people to all the winds. Topic: <laughs> Greek Unlike the Biblical Israelites, the early Greeks maintained two separate and distinct systems of cardinal directions and winds, at least for a while, astral phenomena were used to define four cardinal points, Arctos, Arct Bear, the Ursa Major, for North, Anatole, and Atol Sunrise, or Eos, Dawn, East, Mesembria, Mesembria Noon, South, and Dysus, Sunset. Or Hesperus, evening, west. Heraclitus, in particular, suggests that a meridian drawn between the north, Arctos, and its opposite could be used to divide east from west. Homer already spoke of Greeks sailing with Ursa Major or wagon, 
Wayne for orientation. The identification of the pole star at that time, Kachab in the Ursa Minor, as the better indicator of the north seems to have emerged a little later. It is said Thales introduced this, probably learned from Phoenician seafarers. Distinct from these cardinal points, the ancient Greeks had four winds. Animoi. The peoples of early Greece reportedly conceived of only two winds, the winds from the north, known as Boreas, Boreas and the winds from the south, known as Notos. But two more winds, Eurus Euros from the east and Zephyrus Zephyros from the west, were added soon enough. The etymology of the names of the four archaic Greek winds is uncertain. Among tentative propositions is that Boreas might come from Boros. An old variant of Oros, Greek for mountains, which were to the north geographically. An alternative hypothesis is that it may come from Boros, meaning voracious. Another is that it comes from the phrase apotasbos, from the roar, a reference to its violent and loud noise. Notos probably comes from notios, moist. A reference to the warm rains and storms brought from the south. Eurus and Zephyrus seem to come from brightness, Q, V, Eos, and gloominess, Zophis, respectively, doubtlessly a reference to sunrise and sunset. Topic. Homer The archaic Greek poet Homer c. 800 BC refers to the four winds by name, Boreas, Eurus, Notos, Zephyrus, in his Odyssey, and in the Iliad. However, at some points, Homer seems to imply two more, a northwest wind and a southwest wind. Some have taken this to imply that Homer may have had as many as eight winds. However, others remain unconvinced, and insist Homer only had a four-wind rose. Writing several centuries later, Strabo c. 10 BC notes that some contemporaries took Homer's ambiguity to imply that the Homeric system may already anticipate the summer and winter distinction later made famous by Aristotle. This refers to the fact that the east sunrise and west Sunset are not stable on the horizon, but depend on the season, i.e. during the winter, the sun rises and sets a little further south than in the summer, consequently, the Homeric system may have had six winds, Boreas N, and Notos S, on the meridian axis, and the other four on diagonals, Zephyrus N W, Eurus Ne, Apelliotes S E, and Argestes S W. Strabo, quoting Posidonius notes that Homer sometimes used used epithets of qualitative attributes to append ordinal directions to the cardinal winds, e.g. as western winds bring rain, then when Homer says a stormy Boreas, he means a different wind from a loud Boreas, i.e. wet north. Topic. N.W. Loud north. N. Nonetheless, while it seems that Homer may have realized that there were more than four winds, he did not use those epithets systematically enough to permit us to conclude that he also embraced a six- or eight-point windrose. Other classical writers, e.g. Pliny the Elder, are adamant that Homer mentioned only four winds, Hesiod c. 700 BCE in his Theogony c. 735 gives the four winds mythical personification as gods, the Animoi, Animoi the children of the Titan gods Astraeus stars, and Eos dawn. But Hesiod himself refers to only three winds by name, Boreas, Notos and Zephyrus, which he called the good winds, and the children of the morning. Engendering a little confusion, as it might be read as they were all easterly winds, although curious that Eurus is not among them. Hesiod refers to other bad winds, but not by name. The Greek physician Hippocrates c. 
400 BC, in his On Airs, Water and Places, refers to four winds, but designates them not by their Homeric names, but rather from the cardinal direction from which they blow Arctos, Anatole, Ducis, etc. He does, however, recognize six geographic points, north, south and the summer and winter risings and settings, using the latter to set the boundaries for the four general winds. Topic. Aristotle The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle, in his Meteorology c. 340 BCE, introduced a 10 to 12 wind system. One reading of his system is that there are eight principal winds, Aparxias N, Cecias Ne, Apeliotes E, Eurus S E, Notos S, Lips S W, Zephyrus W, and Argestes N W. Aristotle then goes on to add two half winds, Thracia N N W, and Messes N N E, noting that they have no contraries. Later, however, Aristotle suggests the Phoenicia's wind for the SSE blows locally in some places, but suggests nothing for SSW. So, seen this way, Aristotle really has an asymmetric windrows of ten winds, as two winds are effectively missing or only local. Notice that in the Aristotelian system, Old Eurus is shunted from its traditional position in the cardinal east by Apeliotes, Apeliotes meaning from the sun, or from the heat of the sun. Old Boreas is mentioned only as an alternative name to Aparxias, Aparxias which means from the bear, that is, the Ursa Major, the Arctic Circle. Among the new winds are the Argestes, Argestes meaning clearing, or brightening, a reference to the northwest wind sweeping away clouds. Argists's variants, Olympias, Olympias and Cyrn, Skyrn are local Athenian names, a reference to Mount Olympus and the Syros rocks in Megara. The remaining winds also seem to be geographical. Cecias, Caicias means from Caicos, a river in Mysia, a region northeast of the Aegean. Lips, Lips means from Libya to the southwest of Greece, although an alternative theory connects it to Libo. Libo same root as libation, meaning pouring, because this wind brought rain. Phoenicia's Phoenicias comes from Phoenicia to the southeast of Greece and Thracia Thraskias from Thrace. In Aristotle's day, Thrace covered a larger area than today, including the north northwest of Greece. Finally, Messes Mazes might simply mean middle. Presumably because it was a half-wind, the implication of reading Thracia and Messes as half-winds, and the others as principal winds, is that this implies Aristotle's construction as asymmetric. Specifically, the half-winds would be at 22 and a half degrees on either side of the north, while the principal eight would be at 45 degrees angles from each other. However, an alternative hypothesis is that they will be more equally spaced around 30 degrees from each other. By way of guidance, Aristotle mentions that the easterly and westerly positions are that of the sun as seen on the horizon at dawn and at dusk at different times of the year. Using his alphabetical notation, Aristotle notes that during the summer solstice the sun rises at Z Cecias, and sets at E Argestes. during the equinox, it rises at B Apeliotes, and sets at A Zephyrus, and finally during the winter solstice it rises at Delta Eurus, and sets at Gamma Lips. So drawn on a compass rose, Aristotle's explanation yields four parallels. 1. The ever visible circle i.e. the arctic circle the boundaries of the circumpolar stars stars which do not set connecting half winds ik 2 the summer solstice connecting ez 3 the equinox connecting ab 4 winter solstice connecting grant assuming the viewer is centered at athens it has been calculated that this construction would yield a symmetric compass rose with approximately 30 degrees angles all around if set out on a compass card aristotle's system could be conceived of as a 12 wind rose with four cardinal winds n e s w 4 
Solstitial winds. Loosely speaking, NW, NE, SE, SW, 2. Polar winds. Roughly NNW, NNE, and 2. Non winds. SSW, SSE. Aristotle explicitly groups Aparxias N and the half-winds Thracia NNW and Messes NNE together as North Winds and Argestes NW and Zephyrus W together as West Winds. But he goes on to note that both the North and West Winds could be classified as generally northerly Borea since they all tend to be cold. Similarly Lips SW and Notos S are South Winds and Eurus SE and Apelliotes E are East Winds but once again both South and East Winds are generally southerly Notiae because are all relatively warm Aristotle reasons that as the sun rises in the east then it heats east winds longer than west winds with this general classification, Aristotle manages to account for the archaic Greek two-wind system. The exception to this system is Cecias, nay, which Aristotle notes as half north and half east, and thus neither generally northern nor generally southern. The local Phoenicias SSE is also designated as half south and half east. Aristotle goes on to discuss the meteorological properties of the winds, e.g. that the winds on the NWSE axis are generally dry, while the Ne SW winds are wet Ne producing heavier clouds than SW. N and NNE bring snow. Winds from the whole northwestern sector NW, NNW, N are described as cold, strong, cloud-clearing winds that can bring lightning and hurricanes with them. Aristotle also makes special note of the periodic bending summer Etesian winds, which comes from different directions depending on where the observer lives. Aristotle had aggrandized the wind system beyond Homer to ten winds, but he left it unbalanced. It would be left to subsequent geographers to either add two more winds to SSW and SSE to make it into a symmetric 12-wind compass as Timisthenes would do, or subtract two winds NNW and NNE to make it into a symmetric 8-wind compass as Eratosthenes would do. Topic: Theophrastus Theophrastus of Erisos, Aristotle's successor in the Peripatetic School, in his On Weather Signs and On Winds, c. 300 BCE, adopted the same wind system as Aristotle, with only some slight differences, e.g. Theophrastus misspelled Thracia as Thracias, and seemed to distinguish between Apraxias and Boreas, perhaps as North by West and North. Wind respectively, in the pseudo-Aristotelian fragment Ventorum Citus often attributed to Theophrastus, there is an attempt to derive the etymology of the winds. As they are often named after a particular locality from where they seem to blow, different places in the Hellenistic world have come up with variant local names for the winds. In the list given in the Ventorum Citus, Boreas N is given the variant Pagrius. In Malice, no mention of Aparxias. Messes NNE is given the variant Conias in Rhodes and Idarius in Pamphylia. Cecias is called the Banas in Lesbos, in some localities also called Boreas and Conias. Apelliotes e is called Potamius in Tripoli, Phoenicia. Syriandus in the Gulf of Issus, Marcius in Tripoli, Libya, Hellespontius in Euboea, Crete, Proconesus, Teos and Cyrene, Baracunches in Sinop, and Cataporthmias in Sicily. Eurus S.E. is called Scopeless in Aegean, Carbas in Cyrene. Makes note that some also call it Phoenicias. 
Phoenicia's SSE is not mentioned by its old name but rather as Orthonotos, a new name which can be translated as the true south wind. Notos S is said to be derived from unhealthy and damp. Previously unnamed SSW is given a name for perhaps the first time, as Lucanotos, on account that it is a sky clearing south wind. Lips SW is said to get its name from Libya. Zephyrus W is left unexplained. Argestase NW is cited by a new variant IAPYX unexplained here. Although in other writings the name is connected to Iapygus in Apulia, it is also called Siltinus in Tarentum and elsewhere as Parangites for Mount Pangaeus. Thracias NNW note different spelling is given the local variants Stramonias in Thrace Cyrene in Megaris Circeas in Italy and Sicily which later works will tie to the Mistral and Olympias in Euboea Lesbos note Aristotle gave Olympias as the variant of Argestes NW Topic. Timisthenes The Greek Roman physician Agathemerus c. 250 CE, in his Geographia, gives the eight principal winds. But Agathemerus goes on to note that nearly 500 years earlier, the navigator Timisthenes of Rhodes c. 282 BCE had developed a system of twelve winds by adding four winds to the eight. Agathemerus is, of course, incorrect. Aristotle had at least ten winds, not eight. Timisthenes's list, according to Agathemerus, was Aparxias n, Boreas not Messes n n e, Cecias ne, Apelliotes e, Eurus s e. Phoenicia's is also called Uranotos. S s e, Notos s, Lucanotos alias Libanotos. First mention, SSW, Lips, SW, Zephyrus, W, Argestes, NW, and Thracia alias Circeus, NNW. In many ways, Timisthenes marks a significant step in the evolution of the compass rose. Depending on how Ventorum Citus is dated, Timisthenes can be credited with turning Aristotle's asymmetric 10 wind compass into a symmetric 12 wind compass, by introducing the SSW wind Lucanotos, Libanotos, omitted by Aristotle and Theophrastus and assigning the compound Uranotos. Already alluded to by Aristotle, no mention of Theophrastus's Orthonotos here in place of the local Phoenicia's SSE. His highlighting of the Italian Circeus as a major variant of Thracia NNW could be the first indication of the notorious mistral wind of the West Mediterranean. Another major change in Timoisthenes is that he shunts Boreas out of the north position and into NNE, replacing Messes, which will become customary in later authors. Timisthenes is also significant for being perhaps the first Greek to go beyond treating these winds merely as meteorological phenomena and to begin viewing them properly as points of geographic direction. Timisthenes through Agathemerus assigns each of the twelve winds to geographical locations and peoples relative to roads. Aparxias n are the Scythians above Thrace. Boreas N -N -E are Pontus, Miatus, and the Sarmatians. Cecias is the Caspian Sea and the Sacas. Apelliotes e are the Bactrians. Eurus -E are the Indians. Phoenicia's Uranotos -E is the Red Sea and Ethiopia. Prob, Oxum, Notos s are the quote, quote, Ethiopians beyond Egypt, Nubia. Lucanotos, Libanotos, SSW are the Garamantes beyond Certes. Lips, SW are 
the Ethiopians in the west beyond the Moroi. Numidia, Maori people. Zephyrus, W. Bly. The Pillars of Hercules and the Beginning of Africa and Europe. Argestes NW is Iberia or Hispania. Thracia, Circeus NNW are the Celts. Modern scholars to conjecture that Timisthenes, in his lost Periplus, might have made ample use of these winds for sailing directions, which may help explain Agathemarus's eagerness to credit Timisthenes for inventing the twelve winds. Timisthenes's geographic list above is reproduced almost verbatim centuries later, in the 8th century work of John of Damascus and a Prague manuscript from the early 1300s. The pseudo Aristotelian work De Mundo, normally attributed to an anonymous copier of Posidonius, probably written between 50 BCE and 140 CE. The winds are named practically identically to Timisthenes, e.g. Aparxias alone in the north, Boreas shunted to Nne, Uranotus instead of Phoenicias, Circeus as alternate of Thracia. The differences of Demundo from Timisthenes are that 1, it introduces Libo Phoenix as another name for Libonotos, Lucanotos not mentioned, 2, two alternates to Argestes are mentioned, Iapyx as in the Ventorum and Olympias as in Aristotle. Timisthenes mentions no variants for this wind. 3, like Aristotle, Demundo refers to a collective of north winds, the Borea. Topic. Eratosthenes and the Tower of Winds It is said that the geographer Eratosthenes of Cyrene c. 200 BCE, realizing that many winds presented only slight variations, reduced twelve winds down to eight principal winds. Eratosthenes's own work has been lost, but the story is reported by Vitruvius, who goes on to say Eratosthenes came to this conclusion in the course of measuring the circumference of the earth, and felt there were really only eight equally sized sectors, and that other winds were but local variations of these eight principal winds. If true, that would make Eratosthenes the inventor of the eight-wind compass rose. It is worth noting that Eratosthenes was a disciple of Timisthenes and is said to have drawn principally from his work. But they part ways on this. Both recognized that Aristotle's ten wind rose was unbalanced, but while Timisthenes restored balance by adding two winds to make it a symmetric twelve, Eratosthenes deducted two winds to make it a symmetric eight. It seems that, in practical appeal, Eratosthenes's reduction may have won the day. The famous Tower of the Winds in Athens exhibits only eight winds rather than the ten of Aristotle or the twelve of Timisthenes. The tower is said to have been built by Andronicus of Cyrus c. 50 BCE, but is commonly dated any time after 200 BCE, that is, after Eratosthenes. It gives us its eight winds Boreas, not Aparxias, N, Cecias, Ne, Apeliotes, E, Eurus, S E, Notos, S, Lips, S W, Zephyrus, W, and Cyrn, N W, variant of Argestes. Boreas reappearance in the north slot in place of Aparxias is notable. The figures on the tower are represented figuratively as gods, animoi. It is believed the tower was topped with a weather vane. Topic: Roman. The Greek wind system was adopted by the Romans, partly under their Greek nomenclature, but increasingly also under new Latin names. Roman poet Virgil, in his Georgics c. 29 BCE, refers to several of the winds by their old Greek names, e.g. Zephyrus, Eurus, Boreas, and introduces a few new Latin names, notably, Black Oster, Cold Aquilo, and Frigid Chorus. <laughs> Seneca The Roman writer Seneca, in his Naturales Quaestiones, c. 
65 CE, mentions the Greek names of some of the major winds, and goes on to note that Roman scholar Varro had said there were 12 winds. As given by Seneca, the Latin names of the twelve winds are For the derivation of the Latin etymologies, see the section on Isidore of Seville below. Oddly, Seneca says the meridian line arises from Uranotus SSE, not Oster S, and that the highest point in the north is Aquilo NNE, not Septentrio N. This might imply an awareness of magnetic declination, the difference between the magnetic north, compass north, in this case Aquilo, and the true north, pole star, Septentrio. Topic. Pliny Pliny the Elder in his Natural History c. 77 CE after noting that 12 was an exaggeration, goes on to note that the «moderns» have reduced it to 8. He lists them as Septentrio n, Aquilo n -N -E, Subsilanus e, Vulturnus s -E, Oster s, Africus s -W, Favonius w, and Chorus n -W. Notice that Cecia's nay is not part of this octet. Instead, Pliny puts the half-wind Aquilo N -N -E there instead. It seems Pliny is aware Aquilo is a half-wind, because since he says it lies in between Septentrio and the summer sunrise, although in a later chapter he places it at the summer sunrise. If the first version is taken, this means Pliny's eight-wind compass is asymmetric. Pliny goes on to mention that Aquilo is also Named Aparxias and Boreas. The Boreas identification with NNE is already in Timisthenes, but Aparxias's demotion from the N is novel. When he goes on to discuss half winds, Pliny re introduces CAECIs as lying between Aquilo and Subsilanus, thus restoring it effectively to its NE position. Evidently reading Aristotle, Pliny tries to insert long lost messes again. Between Boreas equals Aquilo and Caecis, thus placing messes in a position that, in a modern 32-point compass, would be called northeast by north. Confusing matters. In a later chapter, Pliny goes on to say that Aquilo, in the summer, turns into the Aegean winds, the periodic wind already referred to by Aristotle. Pliny also mentions, for the other half winds, Phoenicias for SSE, not Uranotus, Libanotus SSW, and Thracia NNW. It is apparent Pliny had recently read Aristotle and sought to resurrect some of the abandoned Aristotelian names, Boreas, Aparxias, Messes, Aetesian winds, Phoenicias. He even mentions Olympias and Siren as local Greek winds, albeit they appear rather awkwardly when inserted into the contemporary 12-wind compass schema. Topic: Aulus Gellius In his Attic Nights, written c. 159, the Athens raised Latin writer Aulus Gellius, possibly inspired by the Tower of the Winds in that city, reduces the Latin rose to from twelve to eight winds, the principal winds, for which he gives both the Latin and Greek terms. He lists them as N. Septentrio, Latin, Aparxias, Greek. Ne, Aquilo, Latin, Boreas, Greek. E, Eurus, Latin, Apelliotes, Greek, Subsilanus, to Roman sailors. S, E, Vulturnus, Latin, Uranotus, Greek. S, Oster, Latin, Notos, Greek. S, W, Africus, Latin, Lips, Greek. W. Favonius, Latin, Zephyrus, Greek. N. W. Chorus, Latin, Argestes, Greek. Among the novelties is the disappearance of Cecias, nay, like in Pliny, although he does make a later note that Cecias is mentioned in Aristotle, but does not give it a position. Aquilo, Boreas seem well enthroned at nay. 
Another surprise is the re-emergence of Eurus in the East, where it has not been seen since Homer. He seems to treat Eurus as a Latin name, giving the Aristotelian Apelliotes as the Greek equivalent, and reducing Subsilanus to a mere variant, from Roman sailors. With Eurus now absent in the SE, Uranotus previously SSE is promoted to the vacant SE position. Finally, a new name, Chorus, is introduced as the NW wind. This is almost certainly a misspelling of Chorus NW. Aulus Gellius gives some information about local winds. He mentions Circeus as a local wind in Gaul, known for its dizzying, circular motion, and notes its alternate spelling Circius in Hispania, probably a reference to the Mistral. He also notes Iapyx, already mentioned, but first here explained as a local wind from Iapygia in Apulia, and periodic regional Etesian winds and the Prodromi, NW4 winds, in Greek. Prodromi. Topic. Vatican table The Vatican table is a marble Roman anemoscope wind vane, dating from the 2nd or 3rd century CE, held by the Vatican Museums. Divided into 12 equal sides, on each of its sides, it has inscribed the names of the classical winds, both in Greek and in Latin. The Vatican table lists them as follows. There are several spelling mistakes, both in Greek aparchias, aphiliotes, thracias, and Latin chorus with an H, solanus minus sub. The principal error of the Vatican table is the misplacement of vulturness in ne rather than se, with the result that the old Greek eurus now resumes its place in Latin. This error will be repeated later. There is also a significant new Latin name, Austroafricus, in place of Libanotus, and Circeus in place of Thracia although the latter was already anticipated by Timosthenes. The old Iapyx of the Venturum Cytus also makes a comeback in Greek. Topic. Isidore of Seville Centuries later, after the fall of Rome, Isidore of Seville set about compiling much of classical knowledge in his Etymologia c. 620 CE. In the chapter on winds, Isidore provided a list practically identical to that of the marble Roman amenoscope held at the Vatican. Isidore also tried to supply the etymology of each of the terms. Septentrio n Isidore relates it to the Arctic Circle. Circle of seven stars, i.e., the Ursa Minor. Septentrio can mean commander of the seven, and the pole star is indeed the chief star of the Ursa Minor. An alternative etymology derives it from Septem Triones, seven plow oxen, a reference to the seven stars of the plow, Ursa Major. Aquilo, nne, Isidore relates it to water, aqua, because but probably from. Aquilus, because it soaks up water from the ground. Pliny says the surface of the earth announces the approach of Aquilo by drying, and the approach of Oster, by becoming moist, without any apparent cause. Alternative etymologies is that it derives from Aquilus, dark, meaning either dark rain clouds, although it is not usually characterized as wet, or simply because it blows from the Land of darkness, the far north. Vulturness, nay, normally se, but placed mistakenly by Isidore in the nay, as in the Vatican table. Isidore derives its etymology from Alt Tornat, thundering high. Earlier, Seneca said it was named after a battle reported by Livy, in which the funneling wind threw dirt into the eyes of Roman soldiers and delivered their defeat. Both are almost certainly incorrect. It is probably an old local wind, named after the hills of Volturno, southeast of Rome. Others believe it related to Volsi, demolisher, from Veller, because of its storminess. Volturno itself is named after Volvere, which meant to roll, and is cognate with Spanish, Volver, which means 
to return. Subsolanus e Isidore says it is from sub ortu solis, from under the rising sun. Concordant with Aulus Gellius, who further notes it is a name coined by Roman sailors. Eurus se from the Greek eos don. Eurooster sse compound of Eurus and Oster. Oster s Isidore derives it from hariendo aquas. Drawing up water, a reference to its humidity. First mentioned in Virgil as the black oster, which saddens all the sky with rain, possibly related to osterous, harsh, hot, or to shine from a light quarter. Ostroafricus SSW, compound of oster and africus. Africus SW, Isidore deduces it correctly. From Africa, a direct translation of the Greek lips. From Libya. Favonius W. Isidore is probably correct in relating it to Favere, a favorable wind. He speaks of it as coming in the spring, melting the winter frost and reviving vegetation and crops. It has also been related as a mild wind that cleared clouds and relieved the summer heat. Chorus NW Isidore spells it chorus and says it is the same as the chorus the frigid chorus mentioned earlier by Virgil but treated as distinct in Vitruvius Isidore relates it to a chorus of dancers who surround heavy clouds and keep them in place Aulus Gellius had already said something similar but in reference to Cecia's a nay wind not chorus Others have related chorus to cover, conceal, because it relates to clouds, or perhaps the shower. Circeus NNW Isidore sees its circular or bending etymology and, perhaps a little confusingly, suggests its name is because it bends into chorus. Pliny and Aulus Gellius had already identified the Circeus as the mistral, Pliny calling it the violent wind of Narbonne, driving waves across to Ostia, while Aulus Gellius called it a local wind in Gaul, known for its dizzying, circular motion, and notes its alternate spelling Circeus in Hispania Isidore gives the Spanish name to be Gallicus, because it arises in Gaul. Topic. Vitruvius's 24 wind rose Chronologically, Vitruvius, who flourished in the late 1st century BCE, precedes all the Latin writers mentioned above, Seneca, Pliny, Aulus Gellius, etc. As such, his system of winds perhaps ought to be considered before the others. But Seneca quotes Varro as the source of his twelve wind system, and Varro wrote before Vitruvius. Moreover, Vitruvius's system is sufficiently distinct and peculiar to defy comparison with the others, and merits treatment in a special category all its own. Vitruvius, in his De Architectura c. 15 BCE, makes a rather approving mention of Eratosthenes's reduction of the winds from twelve to eight principal winds. But Vitruvius then goes on to note there are many other winds, only slightly different from the core eight, which have been given names of their own in the past. In a rather hurried fashion, Vitruvius relates an ample list of two variations on either side of the eight principal winds, which yield a wind rose of 24 winds. Although the 24 winds might be easier to draw equally spaced at 15 degrees from each other, they are easier to list using modern half and quarter wind notation. No insinuation about degrees should be read into either case, principal winds are in bold. Many of the names in Vitruvius's list have appeared before elsewhere. Among the changes worth noting is the insertion of Gallicus, probably the Mistral, and Supernas, probably a local Alps lake breeze, in the very Ne, nudging Aquilo, old N -N -E, to the Ne, almost as in Pliny, perhaps the source of his confusion. Old Boreas, now separate from Aquilo, is shunted further east. It has never been so far displaced from its ancient perch in the north. Cecias disappears from the Ne altogether although it appears on some enumerations of Vitruvius's list and will make a comeback with Seneca. 
Carbas, already noted as a Cyrene variant for the SE, is placed in the northeast quadrant. Latin Vulturnus is rightfully in the southeast, adjoining its Greek alternate Eurus. Greek Argestes is given here separately, adjoining Favonius in the west, albeit below its usual northwesterly quadrant. Leuconotos, previously a variant for Libonotus, is separated off and sent to the southeast quadrant where Euronotos, Eurooster used to be, which seem to have disappeared altogether. There is nonetheless a similar sounding Eurosertius nearby in the southeast, which might be the biblical Euroakilo. Among other things worth noting, Solanus does not have its sub-prefix and the wind chorus mentioned later by Aulus Gellius is inserted between chorus and Circeus with Old Thracia given a separate position above that. Notice that chorus and chorus are treated differently here, rather than one is just a misspelling of the other. Altanus is probably a local reference to a seaborne breeze. Vitruvius's 24 wind list does not seem to have impressed later Roman writers, Seneca, Pliny, etc., who all went back to 12 or 8 wind systems. Vitruvius's treatment has a touch of carelessness. He does not bother assigning Latin to Greek equivalents, give variants, or provide any descriptions of the winds. It seems as if he is merely making a long list of all the wind names he has heard, giving each their own separate position in a single system, regardless of duplication. The shifts of some old Greek winds, Boreas, Eurus, Argestes, Leuconotos into non-traditional positions sometimes even in the wrong quadrant, could reflect the relative positions of Greece and Italy, or could simply indicate that Vitruvius did not much care for this exercise, and assigned their names roughly just to get a nice symmetric system of two off winds for every principal wind. One can almost detect a touch of mockery in his construction, almost as if to ridicule elaborate wind systems that try to push beyond the basic eight winds. Although usually ignored, Vitruvius's list of 24 winds re emerged occasionally. Vitruvius's list of winds was articulated again in Georgius Agricola's De Re Metallica, 1556. Per happenstance, 24 point compasses were used in celestial astronomy and astrology and in Chinese geography, but these are unrelated to Vitruvius. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Medieval Transition. The Classical Age ended with the struggle between the Twelve Wind Rows and the Eight Wind Rows unresolved. Loosely speaking, it seemed as if classically minded geographers favored the Twelve Wind system, but those of more practical bent preferred the Eight Wind system. As the Dark Ages advanced, it could be expected for the Eight Wind Rows to prevail, but the guardians of classical knowledge, such as Saint Isidore of Seville, preserved the Twelve Wind system for posterity. Topic. Charlemagne The Frankish chronicler Einhard, in his Vita Caroli Magni c. 830, claimed that Charlemagne himself adopted the classical twelve-wind system, replacing the Greek-Latin names with an entirely new set of Germanic names of his own invention. Einhard's lists Charlemagne's nomenclature as follows giving their equivalents to the Latin names in St. Isidore's list. N. Nordroni Nne Nordostroni Ne Ost Nordroni E. Ostroni S. E. Ost Sundroni S. S. E. Sundostroni S. Sundroni S. S. W. Sundviewestroni S. W. Vust Sundroni W. Vuestroni N W Vust Nordroni N N W Nordvustrana Charlemagne's nomenclature resolves the half wind dilemma, e.g. N N E versus N E by word order, northeast and east north, giving neither a priority over the other, thus closer to N N E and E N, with N E itself absent. The Frankish suffix Roni means running from, similar to the modern English earn in northern. 
The etymology of Nord is uncertain, the suggestion from Sanskrit Nara, water, might imply, rainy quarter, but this is speculative. Ost means, place of shining. Don, from the same Proto Indo European root that yielded the Greek eos and Latin oster, sund, from sunde, meaning the sund place, and vuist from vues de meaning the dwelling place, as in the place of rest at dusk, same root as Sanskrit vas, dwelling, and Latin vespera, evening. Charlemagne's nomenclature is clearly the source of the modern cardinal directions north, east, south, west, as found in most West European languages, both Germanic, German, Dutch, English, etc., as well as Romance ones, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese. Topic. Arab translators In the early Middle Ages, Arab scholars came into contact with the Greek works. Abu Yahya ibn al-Batrik and Hunayn ibn Ishaq translated Aristotle's Meteorology, and scholars like Ibn Sina and Ibn Rushd provided commentaries on it and expanded on it for their own systems. The 9th century Pseudo Olympiodorus's commentary on Aristotle's Meteorology, translated by Hunayn ibn Ishaq, gave the following Arabic names for the twelve Greek winds N. Simul, N. N. E. Miz, Ne. Niz, E. Sabin, S. E. Aziab, S. S. E. Nuama, S. Janab SSW Haif SW Her Juj W Dabur NW Mawa NNW Jerbia Topic The Mariners Windrows The sudden emergence of Mediterranean portolan charts in the early 1300s, originally in Genoa, but soon in Venice and Majorca too, are believed to be constructed on the basis of sailing directions long written down in the piloting handbooks portolani of Mediterranean seafarers. The directions, maps and nautical magnetic compass, which emerged almost simultaneously, were articulated in an eight-point compass system, with the following names. N. Tramontana Ne. Greco E. Levante S. E. Siraco S. Ostro S. W. Labeccio or Garbino W. Penente N. W. Maestro From these eight principal winds, sixteen wind roses could be constructed with half winds N -N -E, Ene, etc., which merely combined the names of the principal winds e.g. N, N E would be Greco Tramontana, Ene Greco Levante, and so on. Thirty-two wind roses, which were already present in the early 1300s charts, relied on placing quarter winds in between the names of the quarter winds were also just combinations of names of the principal winds see boxing the compass the eight compass winds are evidently from the italian tinged lingua franca in the mediterranean sea during the high and late middle ages of the eight winds only two can be traced to prior classical wines ostra s from the latin oster and labeccio sw from the greek lips but the others seem to be largely conceived autonomously Levante rising, e, and Penente setting, w, are self-evidently related to the sun's position, but are etymologically quite different from the classical terms which might refer to lightness, darkness or the sun itself, but none explicitly refer to the verbs rising or setting. Tramontana n, Italianate for over the mountains most probably relates to the Alps of northern Italy, has nothing to do with the classical Aparxia's Septentrio although it may have a faint connection with the Old Greek Boreas, which lingered in Venetian parlance as the Bora of the Adriatic Sea. The maestro is, as noted, the West Mediterranean Mistral, a wind already given in the Latin Rosa Circeus, but the name here is novel. 
Two Arabic words stand out, Sirocco se from the Arabic al-Shark east and the variant Garbino sw from the Arabic al-Garb west, both of which incidentally translate to rising and setting respectively. In addition, there is the puzzle of Greco, nay, as Greece lies to the southeast of Italy, this suggests strongly that the Greco wind was named in the South Mediterranean, most probably in 10th or 11th century Arab Sicily. Byzantine held Calabria and Apulia was to the northeast of Arab Sicily. A substantial part of sailing knowledge acquired by the medieval Italian seafarers came not from their Roman ancestors, but rather from Arab seafarers via Arab Norman Sicily. While sailors probably could not care less about the source, scholars trained in the classics of Isidore and Aristotle were not so easily won over. The classical twelve wind rose was still being taught in the academies well into the 15th century, e.g. in Pierre Dali's Wimago Mundo using Saint Isidore's version. Several scholastically constructed Mappa Mundi inserted the classical twelve winds. Among these, are the 8th century Beatus of Liabana Mappa Mundi, the 10th century Reichenau Tio Map, the 12th century Henry of Mainz Mappa Mundi C. the 13th century Ebstorf Map, and the 14th century Ranulf Higden World Map. Many mariners' portalon charts tip their hat to classical and clerical authority by inserting indicators of the twelve classical winds on their nautical charts, not, of course, on a compass rose, but rather cartographers might inscribe the names or initials of the classical winds on small colored discs or coins, scattering them along the edges of the map, well out of the way. As early as 1250, the English scholastic Matthew Paris, in his Liber Accidentalist, attempted to reconcile the classical twelve winds he was taught with the new Mediterranean wind rose. In one effort, Matthew Paris assigned the twelve classical names to N, E, S, W and the half winds N, N, E, Een, S, A, etc., leaving the principal diagonals N, A, S, E, S, W and N, W vacant. Thus Septentrio to N, Aquilo to NNE, Vulturnus to Ene, Subsilanus to E, Eurus to SA, Eurouster to SSE, Oster to S, and so on. Indeed, this assignment is frequently used by many authors but not this article to explain the classical 12-wind system in modern terms. In a second effort, he decided to conjure up 16 classical sounding names for all 16 winds of the Mariner's Rose. In his construction, noted on a scribbled corner, he seemed to contemplate the following N Aquilo G, E, Septentrio, N N E, Boreas Aquilinaris, Ne, Vulturnus Borealis, Ene, Boreas Orientalis, E. Subsilanus, Calidus et Siccus, S.A. Eurus Orientalis, S.E. Euro Nothus, S.S.E. Euro Oster, Aegyptius, S. Oster Meridionalis, S.S.W. Euro Oster Africanus, S.W. Eurus Procellasus, W.S.W. Africus Occidentalis W. Zephyrus Blandus G. E. Favonius W. N. W. Chorus Occidentalis N. W. Circeus Coralis N. N. W. Circeus Aquilinari But Paris did not go beyond jotting these names down on a corner of the manuscript. In a note in his 1558 atlas, the Portuguese cartographer Diogo Hamam made one final attempt to reconcile the classical twelve with the mariners' eight by assigning eight of the twelve to the principal winds of the compass, and the remaining four to the half-winds NNW, NNE, SSE and SSW. In Hamam's assignment, Septentrio equals Tramontana N. Aquilo or Boreas equals Greco Tramontana NNE. Cecias or Hellespontus equals Greco NE. Subsilanus or Eurus equals Levante E. Vulturnus equals Sirocco SE. Uranotus equals Ostro Sirocco SSE. 
Oster or Notus equals Ostro S. Libanotus equals Ostro Libecchio SSW. Africus or Lips equals Libecchio SW. Favonius or Zephyrus equals Penente W. Chorus or Chorus equals Maestro NW. Circeus equals Maestro Tramontana NNW equals Topic Comparative Table of Classical Winds equals the following table summarizes the chronological evolution of the names of the winds in classical antiquity. Changes in name or position from the prior listing are highlighted in bold. We omit Vitruvius's 24 wind list because it is too idiosyncratic and does not fit the table. Equals. <laughs> Topic. See also. Equals Animoy Compass Rose Boxing the Compass